my name is Caitlin and this is my story. school was when I first got really into anime and stuff like that and during my sophomore year was the first time I ever uh, dressed up from anime or did cosplay costume play <laughs> where you dress up uh, like anime characters comic characters books movies stuff like that now that I was doing that, uh, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed dressing up. I really enjoyed uh, making my costumes. When I was little, I was, or my grandmother taught me how to knit and crochet. And then in middle school in Arizona, we had a weird middle school system to where younger grades were grouped in with the older grades. We learned how to hand stitch and use a sewing machine. And when I got home, I was so excited. I'm like, mom, I want to use a sewing machine. And so she taught me how to sew a pillow. When I was sewing that pillow, <laughs> When I was finishing up, or I, was, I, I think I was sewing a different pillow, but she wasn't around. She was doing something else, and I had sewn over my finger, and I stopped sewing, stopped sewing altogether, until when we got into high school and I started doing cosplay. That I was like, I'm gonna break out the sewing machine again. Why not? I'm gonna bring up sewing. So. Uh, that's when I made my first costume, which was a uh, schoolgirl school uniform from Anime Angel Beats. I got the pattern, I got the fabric, I sat down and just started sewing. And I still use that same costume today. <laughs> but I realized that I enjoyed it so much that I wanted to make a career out of it. And so I set my mind on going and doing costume design for TV and film because one of my big things was wanting to see other people wear something that I've created, something I've made and something I've designed. And so I set my mind on doing costume design and I reached out to a couple people going towards more getting connections towards Hollywood and getting into that field. During my winter quarter in freshman year of college, everything changed. My aunt had passed away. Um, my mother came to me, she said that she had been in a fatal car accident that night. And everything kind of spiraled down from that moment. I didn't know what to do because even though we didn't talk to her often, she was one of my closest family members next to my father. And uh, I used to go as a child, uh, when we lived in California, when we would come over to California from Arizona, um, we would visit her a lot. And I would visit my cousin, she had this huge ranch with chickens, horses, cows, goats, pigs, anything you can name it. Um, and so we, me and my cousin would run around, we'd play with the chickens, stuff like that. But one of the things that stuck with me the most was riding horses with her. And I had this horse, his name was Ben, and I would only ride Ben. I would refuse to ride any other horse, but after about two years of not being up there ever or anymore, because we were in Arizona, I was heavily in school. Ben had passed away due to a fight with another horse. And when we went up there again, my aunt wanted me to ride another horse and her name was Lily. Me and my aunt are riding double saddle. And so that's where one, the one person that's controlling the horse is in the front and then you have someone in the back holding on. And so we're going up this really steep mountain on this like really tiny trail, like just big enough to hold the horse. And I look down on my side and all I see is this plummet down to the river. <laughs> and in front of us was my uncle and he was riding way ahead of us. 
And so we get to the top of the trail, we look out, it's a beautiful sight. Uh, we stayed up there for about five minutes, and then on our way back down, uh, my uncle had gone ahead, and going back down was really scary. The fascinating thing about horses is that they can sense and feel everything you do. They can sense your fear, they can sense your love, they can sense when you're holding on the saddle, even though it's not connected to them. So I'm holding onto the saddle really tight, kind of hugging close to my aunt. All of a sudden, Lily starts bucking. And we didn't fall down, thank God. She calmed down the horse, but I stopped riding horses altogether. And then we stopped talking to my aunt. We moved back to Arizona. I let go of that part of my life with her. We would see her occasionally, but she was just crazy Aunt Kathy. And we didn't really, she wasn't really a part of our lives anymore because she had struggled with a lot of mental illness. And so my mom didn't really want her around us, even though she loved her dearly and wanted to help her any way she could. She didn't want her around us when we were so young. Fast forward back to when I found out she had died. It made me realize how much I missed her. It's like, it's not something you think about until it's too late. It's like saying I love you to your mother every morning. Sometimes you forget it, but you don't really think about if you said it that morning or not until you think about the consequences of when they're gone. And I hadn't talked to her forever. And so, <laughs> At our funeral, we went up and visited my mother's family in Orville. This was when the whole dam situation was going on, and so what had happened was uh, people were letting their horses go because they didn't want them to drown. What happened was my mom's family had caught two of them and growled them up and put them in their pastures that they had that were empty. And so we went up there after my aunt's funeral and there's these two horses out there. And I looked at them and I'm like, I turned to my mom who's standing and I'm like, how much trouble am I gonna get in if I go in there and pet one of these horses? <laughs> and she's like, it's not my decision to make. So I ran inside and asked uh, my mother's, I can't remember who she is to my mother, but our family. And so I asked her and she's like, yeah, go ahead. And so I, go, I jump in there and I go straight up to the horse and start petting it. I didn't even care if it would like a, like hit me, bit me, anything. I, would, I just went right up to it. Uh, the little kids had wanted to pet the horses and they weren't allowed in the cage or in the stall pasture place. And so uh, I looked inside the barn that was this like old broken down barn and there was two leads. And so I go up to the horse, slip it around its face and bring it, bring it over to the fence for them. And they're like trying to feed it carrots and stuff like that. This horse is not interested. So I let it go, bring the other one over. The other one's not interested. And so my mom kind of ushers them back inside because they're getting like kind of worked up at the, by the fact that the horse won't eat the food. So everybody leaves except for uh, my uncle and aunt, or one of my uncles and aunts. And so I'm, I look at them and I'm like, do you think I can get on this horse bareback? <laughs> and my uncle's like, yeah, why not? And so he comes in, uh, holds the horse while I jump on it. <laughs> and he like leads it around and stuff like that. And in that moment, I realized not only how much I miss my aunt, but how much she had given me. And when I was with her, uh, it kind of brought out my love for animals and horses were a big part of my life and so whenever we were together we always talk about animals talk like and be around animals and stuff like that and so here without her all I had all I had was my dog Coco which her dog had given birth to her and she had gave her to us we didn't really like I never thought about her when I looked at Coco. I just thought it was Coco the family dog, but I never were, I, we were never really around animals like I was with my aunt. And so being on that horse reminded me how much I loved that and how much I missed that. And so that was the first time I really looked 
at myself and said, what am I doing with my life? Where am I going? What do I want to be doing 10 plus years from now when I have my own house and probably a kid? I said I didn't want to be working in the movie and TV industry. I didn't want to be working in Hollywood because those are really demanding jobs and I want to be out close to my family, my friends, and LA is just so far and if I lived up here I'd be constantly driving down there for stuff like this or even traveling farther. Me and my dad, we're always so close and he was the one that introduced me to movies like Star Wars and kind of the nerd and geek universe <laughs> and so that's how uh, I kind of got into everything but I don't want to be traveling. That's the last thing I want to be doing is away from even all my friends and stuff like that. If they want to hang out and I say I can't, I'm shooting a film, it's like I'm going to miss out so many opportunities. I kind of thought long and hard and after a bunch of discussions with my family, my friends, I decided that I wanted to work with horses, kind of be closer to my hand. I decided on equine assisted therapy, which is uh, the use of horses in mental and physical therapy. Kids with uh, mental disorders like autism or bipolar disorder, um, they come, ride the horses, brush the horses, take care of the horses. It's just something that I realized that struggling with mental illness in my family, something that I really thought would help me help me help others, <laughs> if that makes any sense. My end goal now, now that I've given sleepless nights of thought to it, is I want to help others more than I want to help myself. So instead of a selfish goal as going into costume design, even though it's entertainment and brings joy to people, wasn't really as hands-on as I would like it. It's not, it's nothing like a face-to-face -face conversation with somebody and hearing their story, kind of like this. <laughs> well, today I am currently uh, pursuing speech pathology because equine assisted therapy does not actually have a major. It goes into the field of uh, mental therapy. And so that's who, that's who I really want to work with is people with mental disorders and stuff like that. If I can give anybody one thing to take away from my story is that question yourself. Don't ever just settle on what you're doing right here right now. Definitely look at what do you want to be doing in the future? Who do you want to be helping? What was it that inspired you as a little kid? Because I think everybody agrees that we want that little kid in us always. <laughs>